Kinsler here from Light of the Word. I wanted just to share a real quick something with you from Genesis 19. Um, I've listened to several debates about homosexuality and the Bible, and every time that I've listened to the debate, the uh, pro-homosexual advocate always has lost the debate. They have to resort to extra-biblical arguments such as emotionalism or humanism. They, they cannot appeal to the scripture rightly divided to, to make an effective argument for the case of what we call gay Christianity. Now, I know that we live in a world today that just blindly accepts the term gay Christian to be universally accepted and biblical. But uh, when the uh, debate goes to Genesis 19, the argument from the pro-homosexual, quote, Christian, is goes something like this. They, they will claim that when the men of Sodom encompassed around Lot's house that night, and told Lot, bring the men out that we may know them. By the way, that term know is the same terminology used when the Bible says Adam knew his wife and she conceived. So it has, it's about sexual relations, physical sexual relations. There's no, no doubt about that. But the uh, pro-homosexual advocate will at this point uh, argue and presume that these men were not really homosexuals. They were practicing a tradition that was common at that era and that time. And it's a, it was a tradition known as a humiliating type of procedure that the, the men of a city would do to visitors that came into their city. They would, they would literally rape them as, a, as an act of humiliating the visitors. It was showing the visitors that they were inferior to the residents of the city. And that's the argument that the pro-homosexual advocate makes. Now, <clears throat> here is what I want to uh, give you to rebut that premise that these pro-homosexual advocates present when they are um, making their case, and we come to Genesis 19. Uh, let's look at, look at verse uh, 7. Now, after they have said this, here is what Lot says, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold now, I have two daughters, notice this very carefully, which have not known man. Lot's daughters were virgins. They had never had physical sexual relations with a man before. We find out in the next chapter that the only way that they could have seed from a man, which was a heterosexual, was to commit incest with their own father. In other words, Lot, their father, was the only heterosexual in the entire city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Here's something interesting. In chapter 18, uh, Abraham is bargaining with God. And he keeps presenting these numbers to God. And if there, he says, if there's so many, will you spare the cities? And God agrees. And we get all the way down to ten righteous people. And God agrees that, yes, Abraham, if there's ten righteous people found there, I will spare the city. So out of a city, out of two cities that it's estimated the population was between two and 4,000 people at least, only four people were righteous. Lot, his two daughters, and his wife. That's the four that escaped out of the city before God rained fire down upon it. Now back to our... Back to our study. So these daughters were virgins. Now look at what verse uh, 
Uh, let's look at verse uh, 10. But the men, these were the angels, the two visitors, put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. And they smote the men which that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said unto Lot, Hast there here any besides, notice this, son-in-law and thy sons? So Lot had sons-in-law. Where were they? We're going to find out. And thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them plural, Sodom and Gomorrah, is waxen great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. There's physical evidence around the Dead Sea right now, undisputable physical evidence that sulfur brimstone came down from the sky and burnt this place up. And Lot went out. Now I want you to notice he went out to where the men were and spake unto his sons-in-law. Folks, guess who was out there in the crowd that night? Lot's sons-in-laws. Now here is the deal. Lot's daughters had never known man, but they were married to these men. These sons-in-laws that Lot's daughters had never had physical sexual relations with were out there in the crowd wanting to break down the door and have sexual relations with these male angels. By the way, that's the only kind of angel the Bible knows of is a male angel. There's no such thing as a female angel in the Bible. But his sons-in-laws were homosexuals. Now this destroys the premise that all these men were they were heterosexuals normally and the only time they raped men were or had sexual relations with men is when a stranger would come in and they would rape them to humiliate them. Lot's sons-in-laws destroys this premise. It destroys this premise. Now notice it goes on to say, but he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-laws. So his son and sons-in-laws were left there. They, they were destroyed with the city. So if you're ever in a debate with a pro-homosexual, quote, Christian, and you go to Genesis 19, and they bring forth the argument about the tradition of raping to humiliate a visitor, Lot's sons-in-laws destroys the premise. Lot's sons-in-laws were homosexuals, we can deduce from the text and imply from the text that the marriage between Lot's daughters and these men were marriages of convenience to prosper financially or have some other type of gain. It's very evident. These men had no desire for women, Lot's sons-in-laws, but they did have a desire for men, just like every other man in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, both old and young, every man. Think about this. Lot was literally the only heterosexual man in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. What an amazing fact. Here's something very interesting. Jesus himself said it would be like the days of Lot, right before he came back. So folks, homosexuality, the LGBT movement, 
is going to get stronger and larger the closer it becomes to the Lord coming back. But that's a quick rebuttal to the pro-homosexual, quote, Christian that would bring that argument when we come to Genesis 19. The, the homosexual always loses the argument when the, when the debate centers on the Bible. Like I said before, I've heard several, several debates and the homosexual loses the debate every time. The terms gay and Christian are an oxymoronic terminology. There's no such thing as a gay Christian. The Bible does not know of any such thing. Genesis 19 certainly does not uh, prove it by any stretch of the imagination, as we've clearly shown. How sad that these women had never had physical relations with a man and the only way they could do, could experience that was by committing incest with their father. Wow. Incredible. But um, if you're ever in debate with a pro-homosexual, quote, Christian, now you will know how to respond to their premise. Thank you. Mm -hmm.